All right, good morning, guys. Uh, we're moving along pretty good in this project. Evan's ready to start cutting the tenons on both his rails and his stretcher. Okay, so the rails join the two uh, front and back legs, and the stretcher joins the two rails. Okay, just so some, some simple terminology, that's what we're doing here. Um, we're going to cut tenons on both ends of the rail and both ends of the stretcher. I'm just going to demonstrate uh, how we're going to do both ends of the stretcher. Um, it's done the same way on the rails and the stretcher as well. Just to get you guys uh, familiar with what, exactly what's going on here, we're going to have what we call a wedged through tenon. Uh, and it's a really cool looking piece of joinery. It makes a very uh, strong mechanical joint because our tenon, which goes through the rail, is gonna actually poke out like this. You guys can see it's gonna poke out the rail by about, uh, in Evan's case, about a half an inch. And there's actually gonna be an angled mortise, and the mortise is what we call the hole that the tenon goes into. And there's gonna be wedges on the end here, and the tenon is gonna be splayed out at an angle so that that joint mechanically can never come apart. So it's a really cool thing and we can put some different colored wood wedges in there to make it look kind of fancy and kind of dress it up a little bit. But what we need to know now is that the amount of protrusion that comes out the other end of this rail is gonna change the length of our, of our tenon, okay? So we've uh, decided that we want it coming out a half an inch and Evan's rails happen to be uh, one and a half inches wide, so that, that's going to make our tenon length two inches. Okay, so if you're doing uh, the standard dimensions for this project, uh, your rail, sorry, your stretcher tenon is going to be about four inches long. Okay, going through a three inch rail, protruding an inch. Okay, so that, that, that will be on your cut list. So just, just know that. Okay. The other thing now we have to determine is how deep we want the shoulders to be. And the shoulder cut is what we call the actual square cut that uh, defines the main body of this member from where the tenon actually is. Okay, so we've actually gone out and gone ahead and drawn this out. If you can see that there uh, on the video, we've drawn this out. We're going to have a quarter inch deep uh, shoulder on this particular piece. So we've already drawn in here on what the size of the tenon is actually going to look like, okay, as it's, as it's going to come through. So on Evans here, we've decided based on the size that he's made his material, a quarter inch deep is going to look about right. Okay, for everybody else doing uh, the standard size project, a half inch is going to be where you want to be. Okay, a half inch deep shoulder cut, both for your rails and for your stretcher. Okay, so. Uh, knowing that, we need to start doing some machine setup. Okay, I've already got a few things uh, set in place here for you guys. We're going to be using this table saw. This is our dedicated crosscut table saw. We're going to use a miter gauge. And I've got this all set up with some nice sandpaper on here so that your wood's not going to move around. I've got it dialed in exactly at 90 degrees. Um, and because this thing can be bumped and moved, you really do need to check this, that this is exactly 90 degrees before you guys go ahead and do all your setup. Okay, so I've already done that. We're good. Um, that's going to make sure that my shoulder cut is perfectly square. Okay, so that my stretcher is going to go into my rail and there's going to be no gap from that shoulder. It's going to butt directly right into the side of the rail. Okay, I need to set my blade height. So, knowing that my shoulder depth here is a quarter inch, I want my blade at a quarter inch high. Okay, so we can uh, set the square here right at a quarter inch and I'm just going to crank my blade down. Okay, and just make sure that I'm looking at the highest point of the blade. Um, and by the way, when I'm doing this, the lockout switch on the front of the, of the saw here is off. The big heavy duty looking light switch is, is flicked off so that it can't accidentally turn on. All right, anytime we're doing any sort of adjustment like this, that needs to happen. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. Our blade is now at a quarter inch high. Notice also I have a zero clearance insert in here, so it's a very nice new crisp clean insert which is going to give me a really 
um, sort of like a, a scissor shearing cut. It's going to fully support the wood on either side of the blade and it's just going to make a nice job of things. Um, I have this mag fence here. This is set, um, think of it kind of like a stop lock that we can run our board up against. I've got this set at two inches from the opposite side of the blade. Okay, so that means that my tenon length, basically this, this defines my tenon length. Okay, so from this side of the blade to the fence is two inches. That way I don't even have to think about this. I can just butt my board up against there and go ahead and make my cuts. And as I continue to roll this around, I'm gonna have the same shoulder cut uh, every time. Okay. Um, my first cut with my board up against the fence, this is going to define my shoulder, right? I'm then going to continue to just inch this back and make a series of cuts over here as I continue to pull this back. It's going to end up kind of looking like a comb, and I'm going to show you how that looks like in a minute. Um, especially for longer tenons, like when you guys are making the sort of the standard measurement, one a four inch long tenon is a long tenon. We can't cut that very easily straight up and down the way we would normally uh, conventionally cut a tenon. This I found works quite well. Um, it keeps things nice and flat and accurate. We're not going to be using any guards or anything here. The blade's not protruding very much. We just need to be careful and know that indeed there's a spinning blade there that could do damage to your finger. So, um, so just kind of watch out for that. Okay. Just a tip as well, when I'm doing my shoulder cuts, I'm just going to push the board past and I'm going to take the board back out so that I don't risk pulling it out of, out of whack at all when I, when I pull it backwards. Okay, and I'll show you that. Okay, so safety stuff, just like always, sleeves rolled up, safety glasses, earmuffs, things like that. Um, we're going to go ahead and make our shoulder cuts and we'll see what that looks like. So there you guys can see um, I've gone all the way around or I've, I've gone all the way around with my shoulder cut and it should line up perfectly all the way around. Uh, that's the beautiful thing about using this uh, stop block here. Um, then when I was ready to start wasting away the, the bulk of the material from the tenon, I just kind of made this series of saw cuts and you can just go along and break that off after. Well, I cut that one a little thick. You can just use a hammer and knock that off. Um, yeah, you can you can cut them a little smaller if you want. It's up to you. It just depends how kind of how fast you want to go. You're going to be left with a bunch of little ragged edges here. Okay, so you're then going to take this uh, over to your workbench, clamp this in your vise, and you're going to sharpen up a chisel real nice, uh, preferably a wide chisel. That helps. And you're just going to pair across the grain with your chisel, just enough to knock all these little bits off nice and flat. Okay? Um, you don't want to cut into the tenon, right? Um, you want to actually leave like just even a slight little bit of ripple there, just so that you know that you've knocked all of the, the rest of this waste off, but that the tenon itself is still 
the dimension that you intended it to be. Okay, so that's just a, a really simple, clean way of producing a tenon here that's um, that's parallel and that's accurate to the size that we wanted. Okay, so you'd go ahead and just do this to all four sides then to create uh, that tenon, and we're right on our line there. So that's that's looking good. Um, one thing uh, I forgot to mention to you about this uh, fence here is you do want to make sure that this thing is pretty parallel, right? Just because um, you don't want it to change your dimension if, depending on where you... Just, just measure from the slot in the table to make sure that you're, you know, pretty, pretty much parallel here um, before you do this as well. So. Once the stretch is done, Evan's going to keep on going here. He's going to go the rest of the way around here. He's going to do the other side, and he's going to do his uh, rails as well. Um, of course, with the rails, um, the blade height may stay the same if he decides that he wants that same quarter inch deep uh, shoulder cut, but his stop block is probably going to move a little bit because he's not going to want a tenon this long on his rails. Okay, same for you guys doing the whole uh, or the, the full-size dimension workbench project, the tenon length on your rail should be two inches compared to the four inches tenon length on your stretcher. Okay.